So again, thank you to everyone who is present today. This is a room full of familiar faces who have been persistently looking at devising solutions to transform Kenya's affordable housing sector. We're at a moment when so much attention, both international and local, is being directed to Kenya's affordable housing sector. And this is because everyone knows that Kenya has all the ingredients in place to make affordable housing work. Uh, Sita, you've gone on mute. Sita, you're still on mute. Is the slide showing? Yes. Okay. As a very quick contextual background, the FSD network received funding from FCDO to support the affordable housing sector across several African countries in 2020. As this was a new sector to FSD, we commissioned CAF to support in the development of a strategy, and Kenya was selected as the obvious country to start in. The strategy was developed using the housing value chain framework and critically evaluated the failures experienced at each component from land, title, infrastructure, construction, offtake, maintenance, and social and economic infrastructure. We examined these four value chains across four different submarkets of housing typologies, namely incremental housing, informal settlements, small landlord and formal housing, which are generic to most of Africa. The research behind the strategy, which comprised primary research, desktop synthesis and interviews, has been synthesized and shared with the participants earlier this week. Today's session will not review this in detail, but we welcome your critical review of the deck shared and any comments or observations. In this slide, we represent some of the key interventions that are being pursued by various stakeholders, many of whom shared their experiences with us during our strategy process. A key takeaway was the emphasis of most of the interventions to date has been on unit delivery, with the expectation that this will help to create market transformation. What emerged as a common thread is that the success of the unit delivery was often less than expected and finance was not the key limiting factor. There's a greater recognition that more attention needs to be given to the length and complexity of the entire value chain and how finance, on the ground skills and regulatory framework need to be brought even closer together at every single component to enable the broader market transformation desired. This is further validated when we consider the scale of finance required to overcome the gap over the next 20 years. If we start with Kenya's existing 2 million housing unit deficit, and grow it by the annual deficit expected of 350,000 units, we estimate Kenya's housing need over the next 20 years is 9 million units. Using extremely conservative delivery costs of between five to $10,000 a unit, including land, this results in a cumulative investment need of 45 to $90 billion. This is clearly beyond the capacity of any investor or group of investors. And instead of being overwhelmed by the size of the funding requirement, we feel very optimistic about the market positives of Kenya. And we reiterate, Kenya is seen as the most promising country that can enable wide scale market transformation. 
The FSD network agreed on three principles for our affordable housing strategy. These include to use our investment as an action in learning and to share our findings to leverage our collective capacity. The second principle was to promote an open source culture, which enables stakeholders to leverage their existing resources and experiences. And the final principle was to work across the spectrum of housing submarkets and explicitly promote both home ownership and rental tenures. Our strategy was summarized with two broad investment strategies, which are being implemented jointly by the three FSD partners in Kenya, namely FSD Kenya, FSD Africa, and FSD Africa Investments. The first strategy is to invest in promoting incremental and informal housing. This will include working to deliver two pilots aiming to harness the power of technology and innovation to drive the delivery cost down and use the findings to structure financial products to support better delivery and offtake. The second strategy is an investment into an institutional offtaker of formal housing, which will be discussed more by my FSDA colleagues. The purpose of this meeting today is very much to bring together the providers of capital and the users of capital as we acknowledge from the providers of capital that the challenge they're facing in each of their projects extends beyond the capacity of each investor or investee. Again, there's the realization that capital alone is not the only limiting factor. It seems imperative that by working together and sharing our experiences and data and adopting an open source culture similar to the tech and pharma sectors, we could provide the pipeline and justification to bring in longer term patient blended finance products, particularly bringing in local capital and reduce the risk with deep regulatory and market development support. We are, of course, very mindful of privacy concerns regarding data and working to ensure that entities competitive advantage is not hurt, but promoted through this effort. I'd like to just take a break before going on to make sure there's nobody left in the waiting room. We're, we're taking care of admitting them. You're OK. OK, great. <laughs> Super. So I'll spend just a minute talking about FSD Kenya's components now. As I said, we're three entities collaborating very closely together for the affordable housing sector in Kenya. And we just received approval from our investment committee for a four year program, which leverages our localized and technical skill sets and relationships. The three components of our program are shown here. The first being building an enabling ecosystem where we're focusing on supporting efforts by the government, the World Bank, EU and the UN to digitize land information management systems. The vision is to support an interoperability between land registries and county rates and services and create a link with platforms like eCitizen in which FSD Kenya has significant experience and can enable the creation of land title as tenure and collateral and drive efficient revenue collection that can be reinvested into sustainable development. Under this component, we also see that we could play a valuable role in helping to convene stakeholders as we're doing today. The second pillar is to create the demand and supply side financial products, but explicitly for both rental and owner occupation. This is really FSD's bread and butter, and we're beginning to do and design deeper demand surveys and rental surveys to support our work. We're also working closely with Real to devise alternative credit scoring tools, particularly for the lower income. 
In our last component, we focus very much on the incremental and informal settlement typologies and have tasked ourselves with utilizing the power of Kenya's technology and innovative culture to deliver housing for between half a million and one million shillings, including land. We're committed to sharing all our background and supporting research with the wider stakeholder community and believe we can share significant information while being sensitive to any privacy issues. And are happy to support the development of this working group as devised by the feedback and comments we get from all of you present. With that, I'll stop my remarks and open it out either for questions, after which my colleagues from FSD AI will continue. Great, thank you, Sita. Um, thank you, Tamara. Um, I'm really just absolutely excited um, about the launch of this, of this network. Uh, I have had the privilege, actually, for the last, um, gosh, probably 15 years, um, to have interacted um, with um, Kesia Rust at uh, the Center for Affordable Housing uh, on her work um, on trying to develop the housing market. And to be honest, um, I always found it very complex um, and very difficult to understand um, how to finance um, or how to make the financial market work for affordable housing. Uh, and when I joined FSD Africa Investments in October of 2018 um, and met with Kessia and said, you know, we really need to do something about moving the needle um, of getting more capital uh, into affordable housing. And, and that really began my journey of trying to understand uh, the failures of the financial market as it interacts with the housing market. Um, and it was clear to me that we needed to find a way uh, to mobilize more capital, um, but at the same time do it in a way that you're bringing the expertise to address uh, the market failures that are not so much just uh, about the finance. Um, and so it really has been a, del a delight for me to work with Sita. Um, I met her uh, also um, around that time. Um, she has such an in-depth knowledge uh, of the market in Kenya um, to really begin to unpack what those those market failures are. And as we look at the housing uh, value chain, uh, it was very clear to us that there were there were opportunities for us to make investments along the housing value chain because there was such a close interaction with the financial market. Um, housing to us at FSD Africa uh, is, is important because it's an asset. And I think uh, COVID-19 has demonstrated to us um, how important this asset is. For many of us, uh, it's become an office. Um, it's become a place of business. Um, it's, it's become shelter for, for many others. Um, and so we really need to take on that challenge of um, trying to catalyze the billions, the 40 to 90 billion, uh, that Sita talked about um, in order to make housing available and affordable um, to the majority. Um, so our approach um, as we engage with Sita and, and um, Kessia, as well as my colleagues um, at FSD Africa, Evans, uh, who's head of our credit uh, markets work, um, and Evans, who's head of our capital markets work, um, as we began to look at how do we work together in order to move the needle uh, of affordable housing in, Afri in, in Kenya and then in Africa and the continent. Um, we looked at various uh, bottlenecks um, in the market um, and we felt that uh, using, um, investing some of um, our risk capital, um, not only to support the offtake um, from developers in this sector, uh, but also to begin to create the standards around green, um, green buildings, um, but also to impart knowledge to the market. Um, and we have found a partner, and I'm sure that partner is uh, here in the room, and I'm going to let them present themselves. Um, and we are now in the process of uh, preparing uh, an investment um, into this particular fund that is going to support the offtake. Um, of, of affordable housing by developers. But what's important for us 
um, really is that this partnership will allow us to create um, an open source um, entity um, that will be managed by, by CAF um, um, and also to demonstrate um, the, the returns that can be made, not only financial, um, but importantly, the uh, ESG returns um, that can be made through this investment that we hope will then bring in um, other investors um, and begin that um, that sort of waterfall or, or catalytic effect of crowding in more capital into this sector, including uh, from the local um, institutional um, uh, investors. Um, at the same time, as we are looking at the supply side, um, we will be working closely with uh, our colleagues, and, and uh, Jared will speak later, about what does this mean in terms of the demand side? How do we get the market um, to develop products um, that will enable households um, to rent um, and eventually to, to purchase? Um, so I'm very excited to embark on this journey. I think we all realize it's going to be a difficult one. It's going to be a long one. Um, this is this is about building for the future, um, and just really excited to get to know all of the other players um, in this Kenyan environment. And again, thank uh, FSD Kenya for hosting this and championing um, this network. Uh, I'm going to ask Kesia if she will um, talk to the next slide um, around the open source um, uh, um, program that that we uh, intend to support, um, what its what its purpose is, and how we think it'll um, support change in the market. Kesia, over to you. Thanks so much, Anne Marie, and and thank you, Sita and Tamara and and colleagues. It's lovely to be here with all of you and, and to talk about this and to talk about really how we can harness so much energy that's in Kenya um, and use that to serve to serve the attention and need of affordable housing in Kenya and then also think about that more broadly across the continent. So we've been looking at this notion of open source and, and we've talked to some of you about it. Um, and and the, the idea first came really in the same way that you think about generic drugs in the pharmaceutical industry or open source software in, in the tech industry. And is there a way in which we can use collaboration to stimulate innovation and create the space for more players to come in and engage and to improve the quality of their offering and to sharpen their target further down market to really address the need? And, and broadly, the, 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 the realization, as Sita said, is the need is so far greater than any one of us will ever be able to meet. Um, it's, it's every single one of our individual projects will only ever be pilots unless we bring together all of that energy to really understand what is the functioning of the value chain, the housing delivery value chain and where are the blockages and the market failures in that, and then the housing financing chain, which intersects and, and where are the blockages and, and market failures there. And one by one, collectively, using the, the, the collective force of our capital and our energy to articulate specific changes that need to be made in the value chains. And then to recognize that that will extend beyond our individual projects in which we're investing, but further into in, into the wider affordable housing sector and to other players who are also operating in those spaces. So what we're thinking here is really that that the notion of open source involves three broad areas of engagement and the one is data. Um, the second relates to standardized templates and and outputs and the third is participation. So in terms of in terms of data, um, I think you may have heard Sita and I always say we never want to see someone commission the same piece of research twice just because or one person is commissioned it and the other person doesn't know it was commissioned and they do it over again. That's just wasted money. Um, what we want to do is to make as much available in the public domain, all the background research that's supporting investment into a development, where that can be made so that it is instructive and useful for, for other parties to understand to do that. Um, our data collection will look at four areas. The first relates to product, and, and you would have seen our uh, the work that CAF has been doing on construction cost benchmarking, 
where we're trying to understand the differences that exist between jurisdictions in the percentage of expenditure on, on land, infrastructure, construction, um, um, other development services, um, the, the developer markup, taxes, and so on. And we've been analyzing that now over, I think, 22 countries. Well, so let's get specific about that and see how it expresses itself in a project and as that project is live. Um, specifically within that, looking at the green elements and understanding what are the cost implications of particular green considerations and how does that relate between your capital interventions and then the long-term operating cost of that unit and project. Secondly, process, and that's sort of hanging on the tails a little bit of, of, of the doing business indicators, but focusing specifically on housing. And we're looking at steps, time, and cost. And where a particular step that is legislated, it's a statutory requirement, um, if that is legislated to take a week, well, how long does it actually take? And what are the cost implications of when there is a delay? That's a considerable barrier to developers actually across the continent. Um, and that really impinges on affordable housing. Um, the third area is people, and that's demand side considerations. It relates to, to the demand segmentation that, that is, is and, and the feasibility studies and market studies that are going into a development. And then what is the actual experience of that development in terms of demand and ability to pay? Um, all of that information profoundly impacts on the sense of risk. And of course, that will impact on, on cost. And then lastly, performance. Um, what is the performance of a particular development? What are the precedents and the track records that we begin, we can start to, to document and to show that the intention is that that will start to crowd in other investment as the progress of housing delivery actually becomes a known factor rather than an unknown factor. Moving on to the second one, standardized templates and outputs. There what we're looking at is, if, is there anything in the delivery process that can be shared, like a standard lease agreement, a checklist for what would be included in, 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 a, um, in a joint venture agreement with a local authority or, or a land availability agreement with a local authority, or possibly the other legal, legal documentation, possibly the development of open source software that would support property management and, and rental um, at different scales. Um, and then, of course, the background research and the structure of that research to do um, appropriate demand side assessments, supply side assessments, and so on. And then lastly, a form of open source is like what we're doing right now, is that we're talking and we're sharing and we're agreeing to collaborate. Um, and bringing those together, um, my vision for this affordable working group, and I'm just one person, but is that we all bring together our experiences of what are the blockages we're facing, and that becomes a to-do list for a series of other actors, whether that's CAF or FSD Kenya or any one of you, to then start to champion with particular authorities, not only in respect of your own project, but actually in terms of the sector as a whole. So the overall goal is that we're seeking market transformation through our particular investment efforts. And in that, we're driven by this overall philosophy that if we're going to compete in how we access data, rather than in actually how we use that information, we're wasting resources. And certainly within the DFI sector, but actually in the whole of the investment sector, there is far too much need to waste anything. And so collaboration seems to be the right way to go forward. The thing that we're now defining is, well, what does this look like once we've collected it? What does it look like when we share it so that it's useful? And that's really what we'd be very keen for all of your input into. What would be exciting to you? What is the information that you're investing far too much right now in collecting if that were actually freely available so you could really engage with the content and spend your money on that instead. And I'll stop there, thank you. Thank you, Kessia. I think um, we can move on to um, Jared. Yeah, thank you, Anne-Marie. Um, and uh, let me also join uh, everybody uh, to appreciate that this is a very important forum that we have, uh, not least because um, uh, housing generally and affordable housing is very critical. Uh, you can imagine that um, 
uh, housing is uh, one component that has for uh, the commercial and social angle. And uh, if you are talking about development, uh, you cannot actually uh, leave out uh, housing. Um, in any event, uh, housing development has a very strong uh, backward and forward linkages uh, and therefore uh, a big contributor to economic prosperity. Uh, listening to the slides that uh, CETA presented earlier and the resource requirement, uh, it's obvious to acknowledge that uh, there are multiple providers of finance um, towards uh, affordable housing. Uh, and also uh, there are multiple recipients of those resources. And that speaks to the complexity uh, of the housing that uh, Anne-Marie alluded to. Uh, the fact that there are multiplicity of actors uh, points to the need for a careful consideration uh, as to which uh, type of financing is appropriate for which actor. Uh, so as we look at the totality of uh, the interventions within affordable housing uh, within uh, FSD Africa, we have that at the back of our mind that you know there are various actors, there are various financials, and therefore appropriateness in terms of structuring is going to be very critical. Uh, uh, on the back of that, uh, there's, obvious, uh, uh, there's obviously uh, a role that the credit markets uh, have to play, uh, and some could argue that that role is very prominent uh, because it will enable the closing of the supply and demand equation, uh, because some interventions uh, sometimes lean more on the supplier side with the assumption that you no know, demand will follow. Uh, but I think the credit markets and the capital markets uh, play a big role in making sure that you know, there's that breach uh, of the supply and demand side. Uh, considering that affordable housing is an untradeable, as it were, uh, the, appropriateness of, the appropriateness of funding arrangement uh, is very key. Uh, the objective of uh, the credit markets, uh, at least within FSD Africa, uh, is to uh, provide interventions uh, with a view to supporting not just the potential homeowners, uh, but the actors along the supply chain, uh, particularly the SMEs that are feeding into the, into the supply of, uh, of, 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 of houses that are deemed to be uh, affordable. And also to enable uh, the demand side capacity enhancement through uh, sufficient structuring of products uh, that then can enable uh, those houses that are developed to be put into the market. Uh, while there's a lot that is actually known uh, regarding uh, uptake uh, of affordable housing, we still believe that there's a need for a deep dive to understand the key limitations to structuring financial products to support home acquisition within the affordable category. And that's why, you know, this open source uh, is very important for us to take stock uh, as to what we know and also to give us an opportunity to uh, identify areas where we need to drill down so that we are able now to support the structuring of products. One of the interventions uh, that will be uh, uh, undertaken is really a comprehensive diagnostic work that will end up in remedial action to product design. Uh, and that body of work will be key in supporting the design of products such as micro uh, micro mortgages, which could really endear themselves very well uh, to what uh, Sita alluded earlier in terms of you know incremental housing. So that will be supported by a very strong understanding of where the limitations are right now and what needs to be put in place uh, for market players to start designing those uh, appropriate products. Uh, secondly, I think we need there's a we, we think that there's a need uh, and a role for insurance uh, to play in this space. Uh, typically, right now, uh, insurance is seen in a very superficial way, where if you happen to be uh, a beneficiary of a mortgage, uh, you take a life insurance, and that gives the, the lender some level of comfort. But we think that insurance will play a very key role in managing some of the risks that are related to uh, the provision uh, of uh, finance uh, towards. Uh, uh, affordable uh, affordable housing. So uh, we see insurance and, and products around insurance to be very critical in so far as the design is concerned on the demand side. And then of course, uh, there has to be really a balance between the rental or lease models uh, and the ownership model with a view to supporting the appropriate design of, 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 of these products that I've mentioned about. What I've just outlined uh, in my view um, uh, need to be accompanied by some other auxiliary uh, investments um, and interventions. Uh, it, it's a fact, for instance, that uh, uh, credit guarantee schemes are either being designed or being mooted uh, in Kenya and in other uh, jurisdictions within Africa. I think it will be nice to see how, uh, especially credit guarantee schemes that are sector specific, uh, can be attuned to so that they speak to uh, requirements. 
uh, of affordable housing, uh, especially the SMEs uh, within the affordable housing space that may be leading uh, uh, financing so that they're able to play their role uh, in this space. So those kind of product designs uh, really need to be accompanied by a clear understanding of whether the regulatory and policy environment is really conducive with that. Particularly uh, uh, issues to do with tax policies, uh, pensions transfer, and uh, up and planning and infrastructure. That then can enable us to have an ecosystem uh, that then will be able to uh, speak broadly to uh, the bridging of the gap between the demand side of the housing, uh, affordable housing and the supply side. Uh, capital markets, of course, it's at a very critical role uh, in this in this space. Uh, if there are any investments that need to be done, uh, it provides a very clear exit avenue, uh, especially when you start talking about the rate market. There's a need to look at how syndicated blended finance, uh, green bonds, and other uh, such kind of initiatives will play a very key role here. Uh, and therefore, in totality, we see a situation where uh, the programs that have been signed by, by, by uh, FSD Kenya within uh, uh, the strategic thing around affordable housing and what we are proposing to intervene both from FSD Africa and FSD Africa Investments really work towards making sure that we see uh, increasingly uh, the challenges of uh, affordable housing, which are really uh, substantial. Are being addressed uh, and being addressed in a manner that brings on board as many partners as probably we're having on this call. So maybe I can just uh, ask my colleague uh, Mary from the Capital Market Authority to share just some few thoughts around what specific aspects of capital markets uh, uh, can, can can feed into this uh, into this uh, broad body of uh, intervention that we're proposing to do. So Mary, if you're on the call, you can just um, uh, take a few moments to speak to some of these capital market related issues. Thank you very Thank you. much, uh, Jared. Um, so from a capital markets perspective, of course, we find this uh, very exciting because uh, working together with the FSD Kenya team and FSD Africa Investments um, in interactions with the market and, uh, you know, live uh, transactions, we'll be able to provide uh, support that is two-pronged. Um, one is uh, providing transaction support for capital market transactions, which are needed uh, to do two things in, in the affordable housing space. One, of course, is to um, provide a source for long-term funding, uh, that is both for development finance and also for uh, institutions that want to own land. Um, so capitalizing on the capital market as a source of that funding. And then the other thing, as uh, Jared has mentioned, is the capital market, of course, is a, a, a good route for exit uh, for investors who exit um, investments in, you know, it could be um, property funds or any other investments that are able to exit through the capital market. So for us, we see the support that we are going to lend uh, to be uh, complementary to the uh, additional initiatives that uh, both the credit markets team, FSD Africa Investments and also FSD Kenya will provide. Because on the one hand, um, when we look at the, you know, the various products, I think we've listed here, there is REITs, uh, green bonds, project bonds, and also blended uh, finance uh, models. So it will be an opportunity for us to provide uh, transaction support, but also related to that is um, regulatory support. For example, um, if we look at uh, REIT transactions, if I can use that as an example, um, I think uh, some of you may be aware there has been a rollback on the tax exemption that has been provided by government. And so I think when we are able to look at a, a live transaction, we have an opportunity to actually work together with the regulatory side, uh, the regulators to push for these amendments that are required to actually um, support these uh, exit route transactions like REITs. The, finally, what I can say is, um, so we look at the market in terms of, of course, the issuers, uh, enabling them to access uh, the market through the transaction support. And also that on the on the demand side, uh, looking at institutional investors and working with them through some of our programming to support uh, pension funds in, you know, channeling some of their capital to towards this uh, particular uh, products and uh, to support affordable housing more directly. So I think uh, I'll stop there. That would really be where we see our value add, uh, providing uh, primarily transaction support and ancillary to that uh, regulatory support to unlock long-term uh, capital for, for this particular sector. Thank you.